Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. Last time we looked at the church in Pergamon, where the throne of Satan was located, and we discussed the incredibleness that that throne had been moved to Berlin, and that not long after, we had the First World War, when the Pergamon Museum was opened, the Second World War followed. I also discovered that the year that uh, the first parts of the uh, throne of Satan, the throne of Zeus, uh, had been taken to Berlin was the year that Hitler was born in 1889. And also in post-Brexit Britain, it's also interesting that the Treaty of Rome wasn't signed in Rome. It was signed in Berlin, in the Pergamon Museum. So the influence of the enemy through the nation of Germany, through Europe, I'll leave it to you to decide. Now, there won't be a session next week as it's half term. So today we're going to be looking at two churches, the churches of Thyatira and Philadelphia. And so we turn to our Bibles, chapter two, and the first church is Thyatira, and we start at verse 18. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Thyatira. This is the message from the Son of God, whose eyes are like the flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. I know all the things you do. I've seen your love and your faith, your service, your patient endurance. And I can see your constant improvement in all these things. But I have this complaint against you. You permit that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, to lead my servants astray. She teaches them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offered to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her on a bed of suffering. And those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from their evil deeds. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person. And I will give to each whatever you deserve. But I also have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira, who have not followed this false teaching, the deeper truths, as they call them, the depths of Satan, actually. I will ask nothing more of you except what you hold tightly to, what you have until I come. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end, to them I will give authority over the nations. They will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my father, and I will also give them the morning star. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Quite a significant message to the church in Thyatira. First of all, things to celebrate, things to uh, know that the Lord, first of all, who is the Son of God, and there were other gods that proclaimed themselves as the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze possibly referring to the smelting furnaces and the bronze idol makers of Thyatira. 
I know all the things that you do. And that's quite a thought for us. Because the Lord looks at the heart, not at the outward appearance. But he also looks at the fruit. And the fruit here is I've seen your love, your faith, your service, and your patience, endurance. And I can see also constant improvement in all these things. Quite an accolade and quite a, an amazing act of praise because of the pressure that they would have been under in Thyatira with the trade guilds and the segregation and Christians being seen and treated like second-class citizens and to keep themselves pure from all the idolatry and wickedness must have been hard. So to have that praise is greatly encouraging. But then Jesus goes on to say, I have one thing against you, that woman Jezebel. We remember in the Old Testament where Elijah was raised up as a prophet of God to stand against King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Ahab was one of the most wicked kings of Israel. And he married Jezebel from a pagan country. And she brought with her her witchcraft, but also the worship of Baal. That included sexual immorality, eating food that had been offered to idols, and also the sacrifice of their children in the fire to the god, small g, Baal. And the principle about Jezebel is this. That spirit can be prevalent today. And it works like this. King Ahab had the authority as king. But he was weak and a wimp. So, for example, when he wanted to buy a vineyard, which he could see from his window, from his palace, and the owner said, no, I can't possibly sell it to you because this has been in my family for generations and I must pass it on to my children and their children's children. He went up to his room, lay on his bed, turned to the wall and sulked. And Jezebel came in and said, what's the matter? He told her and he said, don't worry. And she had the owner of the vineyard murdered. And the king took possession of the vineyard. So he had yielded his authority to Jezebel. And more and more she took control. And more and more she had influence. And more and more her wickedness grew. So perhaps the message for Thyatira is the leaders are weak in that they're allowing this woman, Jezebel, to be within their midst. And what's happening is that she's leading the congregation astray. She's probably saying, oh, don't worry about it. You don't have to uh, abstain from going to the temple and worshiping there. You know, you can do that and then come here on worship day. Mixture foot in each camp we talked about how that cannot happen because as part of the the guild which was linked to the worship of gods there would be orgies sexual immorality eating forbidden food and compromise the very things Jesus came to set us free from. Jesus goes on, but I have given her time to repent. But she doesn't want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her on a bed of suffering. And those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn from their evil ways. So there's all, even though there's a judgment here, there's always a way of escape. I will strike her children dead, 
then all the children will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person, and I give them each what they deserve. Now, some people will say, how can a loving God throw somebody on a bed of suffering and those who follow this woman, and then I'll strike her children dead? Well, if you remember, the Jezebel spirit is to do with sexual immorality. And if there are orgies and multiple partners, what is the thing that happens? Sexually transmitted diseases, miscarriages, children born out of wedlock. And under the Jezebel with Elijah, they would just throw them to the god Baal and burn them to death. So they're getting their just desserts in the way in which following a false god. And to be honest, they've decided what their judgment is by following the woman who has the spirit of Jezebel. And it's interesting that there are some who have not followed these ways, um, this false teaching, and it explains here the deeper truths, as they call them, but actually they are Satan's. And there are many people who compromise and they have crystals hanging up in their homes. They go on holiday and bring a little idol from the temple or something that they've uh, visited while they've been there. Or they'll go into a supermarket or uh, a, a big uh, store and see and buy perhaps a head of another god. You know, you can see them in lots of stores. Or you might be involved in horoscopes. You might go to seances. You might have gone to a spiritualist. And scripture's clear that it is forbidden because it's an abomination to the Lord to attempt to contact the spirits of the dead. They're gone. They're dead. And if you contact a spirit, it's probably a demonic influence. If you are a follower of Jesus... You need to be a follower and disciple of Jesus. And a disciple is somebody who is like their master. He didn't have any of these things. In, in fact, he cast out the demonic influences and destroyed the things which were ungodly. Some people are part of organization that have secrets. And you can only be a member if you follow those secrets. Gnosticism, they call it. Knowledge. It was one of the great heresies of the past. The gospel is simple. Yes, there are things which we have to read and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us so we understand it. But it's not hidden when we're inspired by God's Holy Spirit. And there's nothing we can do, and there's no knowledge we need, apart from the blood of Jesus, that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is coming back, and that we are forgiven because of that. There's nothing else we need to know, except go and share that love and faith serve people in patient endurance. And then Jesus says, I ask you nothing more than to hold on tightly to what you have until I come. To all who are victorious who obey me to the very end, I will give authority over the nation. So all these people that have manipulated 
things, all these um, challenges and difficulties that you've encountered through the state, through religion, through people, you will rule the nations with an iron rod. And I'll also give you authority, the same that I give to the gave, I received from the Father and the great morning star, and that's Jesus himself. And it's interesting that these letters and messages to the churches are relevant to the church of the day, but also because they allude to the future and the new millennium uh, kingdom when Jesus will come to rule and reign for a thousand years, they're relevant even to us today. And we can see these things within our own churches. We may have some people that operate within the spirit of Jezebel. Their husband or the leader is weak. And, this, and it can be a male or female. And they take control. And they manipulate they seduce, they cajole, and they lead people astray. Not necessarily into orgies, but maybe into religion, away from relationship. Anyone who has an ear to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Because these things are spiritually discerned and understood. Now, there is a video that goes with these two um, sections that we're talking about today. And I will put that link in the description below. But if you want to keep up with the uh, new films that are, and clips that I do, please click the subscribe button below. And there's a little bell, click on the little bell, and then that will give you notification of when the next clip is being uploaded and you won't miss anything. Now we move on to the church in Philadelphia. And this is chapter three, beginning at verse seven. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is a message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key of David. When he opens, no one can close. And when he closes, no one can open. I know all the things you do. There it is again. And I've opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say that they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones that I love. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. And all who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God. And they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God. And they will be citizens in the city of my God. The new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Again, the church is being praised for its perseverance, for its faithfulness, and for not denying the Lord under extremely difficult situations. 
But the Lord is also reminding them and us that he is holy and true, righteous, a reflection of our magnificent God in heaven without sin. And he is the key to eternal life. He has the keys to understanding. And the golden key for us is obedience. So even though you may be cast out of the synagogue, because people have spoken against you, risen up as religious people like the Pharisees and Sadducees did against Jesus, even though they may slam the door in your face, you may be ostracized. The film talks about how um, the Jews were excluded from worshipping the emperor. And your name was written in the book. And Jesus alluded to this later in the scripture saying, um, I will never strike your name out of the book of life. If your name was not in that book, then that meant you were not exempt from worshipping the emperor. And you could be significantly persecuted. But Jesus says, I am opening the door that no one can shut. And there will be a time when they will acknowledge you and fall down and bow at your feet. Is Jesus referring to Joseph, who was uh, thrown into a pit by his brothers? You know that Joseph with the coat of many colors, sold into slavery into Egypt, went through Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. He was thrown in prison. And you know the story. He became the second in the whole of Egypt as ruler. And Joseph had had a dream of the brothers bowing down the ears of wheat and the stars bowing down to them, and that enraged them. But when they came begging for food and sustenance, that's exactly what they did. And here it's alluded to a similar thing. Verse 11 says, I'm coming soon. That word soon is interesting because it can be translated suddenly or quickly. And here we have to remember that this scripture is in different layers. The past, present and future. That a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years like a day. We see time in a linear fashion. God sees it all. And in the scheme of things, his return is soon. <laughs> it will be suddenly and everyone will see it. And it will be quickly when it comes. It's also amazing that the Lord will protect them from the final testing. And like in the great tribulation in Jerusalem, it says that the time was restricted lest no one was able to persevere. And here again, um, I will protect you because you obeyed my commands to persevere. And all who perseveres will have a crown and none can take it from you. And, will, and you will become pillars in the temple of my God. And you'll never have to leave it. So you'll be built into the fabric. Into the precious presence. Of the king of love. The king of kings and lord of lords. Stable eternal, foundational, close. And even more than that, 
you will have God's name written upon you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. And in addition to that, Jesus will write his new name upon us. Showing the intimacy of relationship. As we are grateful and give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. As a child is gathered and hugged. As a bride looks forward to the marriage with the bridegroom. That relationship is going to be awesome. Intimate and beautiful and eternal. So come to me, says the Lord, all of you who are weary and heavy laden. That might be because you dabbled in things you shouldn't in the past. It might be that you're stuck in religion. It might be that you're being led astray by those who should know better. It might be that the leaders are weak and have yielded authority to those who should never have it. Come to the Lord. Repent deeply. Repent means not, oh, I'm sorry, or, oh, I'm sorry because I got caught. It means asking for forgiveness from the heart, turning the opposite direction and not doing it again. Come to Jesus at the cross, asking him to forgive you, cleanse you with his precious blood, to come and dwell in your heart by his Holy Spirit and receive your eternal reward. And then go and share that love with all whom you meet. So until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.